Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is your Philadelphia Phillies are going to the World Series photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. As you know by now, I've been using Squarespace for jaredpoland.com for well over 10 years. 10 years. There's a reason I've been using Squarespace for my own portfolio for that long, because it's just so damn simple to use. I simply drag, drop, and go, and there is no coding needed. In fact, it took me less than five minutes to get all of these poison photos up into a gallery. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code FRONOSPHOTO at checkout to get 10% off your first order. And maybe one day I'll stop yelling. I'm just emoting. First up, let's kick off this two-story fix with Nikon, who announced firmware version 3.0 for the Z9. Now, firmware 3.0 brings, get this, 20 new functions and features. Boy, oh boy, I hope autofocus is one of them. Phone call. I wonder who that could be. Hello? Hello? Hello again? This is all wrong. Oh, it's Greta Thunberg. What? No, how dare you this time? No? Huh? How dare you? Oh, great. There it is. Good job with PR, Greta Thunberg. Bye. All right, now back to those almost 20 features or the ones that I think you'll care the most about. 20! Ah, ah, they ah. include high-res zoom when capturing 4K video. This feature basically shoots in 8K but gradually crops to a 4K frame, thus doubling the focal length while still keeping the native 4K resolution. There's high-speed frame capture plus called C60 mode, which allows you to take 60 19 megapixel still JPEGs a second with a DX crop. Now keep in mind, Canon's R3 lets you capture up to 195 frames per second full raw. I like it with focus locked on the first frame, mind you, but still, it does that all in RAW. Yeah, I like it raw. Next on the list is high frequency flicker reduction for video. Previously, it was just there for stills. Vertical playback display that displays the info in vertical orientation is something new. There's more customizable buttons, including letting you map out the record button and full format function when using CF Express cards that support that feature. And that's it. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, fine, and it's not it. There's an entire section on autofocus enhancements. Enhance. So let's jump right into those. You can now change the color of the focusing points to red, which I think was a suggestion that I gave them back in the day. Next, detection of fast moving animals has been improved when animal is selected in 3D tracking. And the biggest AF update of all is when 3D tracking is selected, focus will less likely shift to a subject that momentarily enters the frame, AKA they claim to have made it more sticky. sticky. Now I did get to take a Z9 with the new firmware for a quick spin and test it out in the real world to try out that 3D tracking and well, nothing really jumped out at me as being noticeably better. It's still just fine. How dare you? Honestly, it feels more like a minor upgrade where they went from 2.11 firmware to say 2.2 firmware, not exactly 3.0. We'll see what they come out with in the future, but we will be diving into this story and the next one in much more detail on the next Fronos Photo Raw Talk podcast that comes out every Friday. To check out all of the past podcasts, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast or check your podcast subscription feed wherever you listen to podcasts. Just look up Frono's Photo Raw Talk podcast. And finally, Sony has unleashed the long-awaited A7R5 into the world. Wear it now, now. Now, I was lucky enough to get my hands on a pre-production body and took it out into the real world to photograph a mural being painted, a band in a dimly lit recording studio, and a soccer game. We also put out our hands-on preview for you to check out after this video. Not now, but after. All right, let's jump in to the specs. The A7R5 sports the same 61 megapixel sensor found in the A7R4, but with some slight tweaks. 
like a Bion's XR processor that will supposedly give it better image quality. The body design is slightly tweaked with the record button being moved around to the top and the SNQ dial being added to the top of the camera. There's now three different RAW options you can shoot in. There's RAW small at 15 megapixels, medium at 26, and large, the full 61 megapixels. But they also added an APS-C crop mode that gives you an oversampled 26 megapixel image. But if you really want more reach, just crop in post or get, get a longer lens. That's what she said. And stop bitching about being a bird photographer and 1200 millimeters not being enough. Get closer! The ISO range is 100 to 32,000 natively, and I pushed it to 8,000 in the studio, and it looked fine. Now, mind you, I couldn't open the RAW files just yet at the time, but the JPEGs held up okay. Now, if the JPEGs are fine, you know that the RAW will be even better. RAW files are far more superior to JPEGs that are already baked. Don't agree? Fight me, nerd! One of the coolest new additions is the multi-axis tilting and rotatable touchscreen. You kind of get the best of both worlds, flippy and and floppy and rotatable. When it comes to the autofocus, you have the same 693 autofocusing points, but now there's a new dedicated AI processing unit. Skynet has become self-aware. This new processor uses deep learning to better locate and track your subjects, unlike the Z9. How dare you? In my real world usage with this camera, the autofocus was definitely more sticky on my subjects. The sticky stuff. It found bodies, faces, and eyes better than any Sony that I've used up until this point, including the A1. But Sony isn't the first company to use deep learning in their AF system, because Pentax probably already did it 20 years ago. And how'd that work out for them? They seem happy. Anyway, Canon has been doing this with their dual pixel AF for the last few years, and included it in everything from the R10 to the R3 and everywhere in between. Now, I suspect all future pro Sony bodies will get this this new AF engine as they are updated. Now in terms of video specs, you can shoot 8K up to 24P with full pixel readout with a 1.2X crop. There's 4K 60, but with pixel binning on top of another 1.2X crop. But for the cleanest video and the sharpest video, you can shoot 4K Super 35 up to 30P, which is oversampled from 6.2K. There's also a new IBIS system that will give you eight stops of stabilization regardless of the lens that you use. That's Cool. Now all of this comes at a price just shy of $4,000, which begs the question, if you have an A7R4, do you need to upgrade? And the answer to that is, well, not really, but I go much deeper into that answer in the real world preview, should you upgrade to an A7R5? And the answer, and there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out that real world preview, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.